Well, now we've got something really special, guys, because joining us is the founder of Cerny Games and also a guy who uh, is the system architect for PlayStation 4, the one and only Mark Cerny. Yes. Great to see you, Mark. How's everything? It's Good. A, it's a big day for PlayStation. Yes. That's the press conference coming up uh, tonight hours. at uh, 6 p.m. But before then, we are going to get a brand new look, a game that's very close to your heart, Knack 2. Yes. So first of all, tell us, why is it called Knack 2? Well, you know, it's, it's been fun looking at the boards. They had lots of helpful suggestions. My favorite ones were, what, Knack 2 Electric Boogaloo, <laughs> and uh, I think another good one was uh, Knack 2 The Knackening. The Knackening, but, okay. Knackening, whatever a Knackening is. Yes. But, uh, you know, the, at the end, we just, just decided to keep it simple. It's at Knack 2. Now, obviously, Knack uh, was a title that right when you were on stage announcing the PlayStation 4, we got our first sort of glimpse at uh, this yes. world of Knack. Um, and it's something that uh, you know the team has been working on this new game. So tell us a bit for people that may not have experienced that, because there are a lot of PlayStation players that you know bought the system a couple years into it. What you know, you have an incredible legacy of building so many great games, and people watching may not know Mark's history, but I mean Mark has been in the industry for over 30 years, has contributed to incredible you know games like Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. You know, Mark has. Just really Spyro the Dragon. Spyro, yeah. that's yeah. right. Even Sonic back in the day, yes. producing that. So Mark knows, you know, great platforming and uh, is, you know, a, is a coder and a, just such an intelligent guy. So I wanted to ask you about Knack. You know, why did you want to create this franchise and this type of gameplay for you know t the 2017 gamer? Well, I mean, the, the, the origin of 2013 game was yeah, just I sure. thought, wouldn't yeah. it be nice, you know, if there was a, a character action game? Yep. Uh, available at launch. Yep. So we went ahead. I mean, we had an idea that there'd be this uh, very special character who could uh, pick up parts and grow larger. So the idea is that Knack, uh, you know, if he picks up more parts, he can be, uh, he starts out two feet tall, but, you know, eventually he can get 30 feet tall. And his yep. character changes a bit as he does that. When he's, when he's little, he's more mascotty, mm -hmm. sort of old school. And then when he's six feet tall, he's more human. And yep. 30 feet tall, he sort of starts to edge into a monster territory. Yes. Uh, so th that was a concept, and we, we did it for launch. Um, yeah, we did get kind of, I've got to be honest, a kind of a mixed reaction to right. the title. Uh, a huge weight of expectation being the first title shown for PlayStation 4. Yes. So for Knack 2, you know, we went back in, we, we took our feedback, whether it be reviews or uh, boards or uh, you know, what we got in the play tests. And with Knack 2, um, Variety is really our keyword. I, gotcha. I think anybody who's seeing the footage right now can just see you know, every level of the game. It's still the same character, but we now have not just the combat, but also um, platforming gameplay. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, lots of little puzzles. Not that deep, but you still get that three minutes of trying to figure out what to do and that fun eureka moment uh, when you figure out how to make forward progress. It's very sandboxing the game. because there are a bunch of you know, more open environments you can have things in different a ways. A little bit more often, uh, open yeah. uh, combat, much, much deeper. Yeah. So uh, you have oh, a lot of different moves, reach out your arm 20 feet and grab an enemy and pull them in and beat them up. And, or, obviously, uh, and changing form in many different ways again, right? Yeah, uh, you have control over your size. We're seeing yeah. a little of that here. So you can, anytime you want to get small, you can get small. So you can see that climbing ledges wow. here works well. Uh, There's still something about, you know, that sort of the cadence of that gameplay, which still works, right? So many years later, it's just, you know, you can add in new elements, with, as you said, size and all these other things. And, and technically now, um, you know, with PS4 and PS4 Pro, it allows you to create these beautiful worlds and allow this character to scale in ways that, you know, 10, 15 years ago could never probably really do um, on the hardware system. It's so, definitely like fun doing all the little physics -y stuff with his yeah. parts. Yeah. So right right now we're seeing some platform stuff. The team's very careful. This isn't this isn't sort of floating platforms in space like it would have been you know 20 right. years ago in the genre. Uh, in the level we were seeing earlier, there was a, a series of water wheels which are providing power for the, for this city. And then wow, uh, the scene we were just seeing. Look how it's just so you said the variety and diversity, of sort of all well, these. That's one of the, the, the fun things about the genre is you. Yeah. you you can go to so many different places. I mean, old school, you had the ice level and yes. the lava, lava level, level, and these <laughs> days it has to be yeah. a bit more story-based. But really, the challenge part of the story making is how do we take our hero through right. all Objective. of those different places yeah. uh, and have a real rationale for it. Yep. 
Yeah, well, it's, uh, it looks incredible. Now, tell me, how, how does this game get developed? Because you are such a busy guy working on so many things. How much of you know, Mark Cerny's time is devoted to kind of working with the team in that? So the team is uh, the Japan studio. Mm -hmm. So Sony Interactive Entertainment's worldwide studio has yeah. 200 and something people in a facility in Shinagawa. And that's those people created Last Guardian yes. and Gravity Rush yes. and uh, Knack. There's a couple of five different teams in, in that facility. And you know, I have to be in Tokyo anyway every month because of the hardware works. So yeah. it, you know, it's very easy to sit down and have those face-to-face -face meetings every three to four weeks. And then when I'm back in the States, uh, a lot of teleconferences and getting builds and playing talking to the team. I guess like sitting at home, playing, playing yeah. the latest yeah. build. Get on and, the phone. Uh, I mean, you know, what's great though, I, I'm sure, you know, for someone like you has so many opportunities and obviously you know, taking care of the hardware is a big part of the business, but there must be something creatively to you that you really enjoy still making games. Well, you know, the best advice I ever got personally was from the, uh, the, the former chairman of, of Sony um, Interactive Entertainment, and he was saying, don't stop making games. You know, yeah. Yes, you know, hardware is important, but a lot of the value uh, a lot of the ability to understand what needs to be created comes from working with the technology, trying to use it in creative ways. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, uh, you're right. You get to go hands-on, and then you know the ins and outs of uh, what it can and can't do. Uh, and it looks really, uh, I got to say, you know, it's one of those things that the gameplay, when you look at it, it just looks very, you know, a lot of variety to it, and I can't oh, wait to see it. One more go thing, yeah, uh, co-op. Yep. So we've doubled down on co-op. A okay. um, lot of careful work with the camera to make sure that you know two players can play freely in, in all the scenario. way through the game. You and your uh, uh, it's couch co-op, but mm -hmm. because we have share play as part of our user experience, right. the, the other player can be at their own house with yep. their own PlayStation Four. They don't even need to own the game, and they right. can come join. Oh, cool. Uh, what else? The uh, the second player. There's a lot of different modes, like driving a tank. I've been showing to some of the press. It's okay. fun. No, that's why it's like this uh, is a full scale. All of the, uh, the second player is, is never a spectator. Okay. So even driving a tank, what we do is we, we go in and it's like the second player is manning the one weapons driver, one turret. You've got it. Yeah, yeah. You've got it. Just make sure that it is um, fully involving experience for both people. Well, I got to say, it's, uh, it looks great. And you know, one of the things I love about PlayStation is they're you know, always investing very heavily in first party and creators and even something like Mac. Where people are like, well, would they do a sequel or not? It's like for you to be able to come back and build on this franchise uh, and you know, continue to take it in new directions is really exciting. So when, when will people get to play this? Well, we've said later this year. We haven't set the okay. date yet, but I'm sure that announcement will come fairly soon. Okay, well, there is a big press conference tonight, so yes. who knows? All right, well, Mark Cerny, it's Thank great you seeing so you. One much. of the true legends in the video game Thank business, so Mark much. Cerny. And we'll see you, uh, we're excited to see you at the E3 Coliseum. Uh, he's going to be on stage Talking with the entire about team. Crash Bandicoot. I know, yes. 21 years later, we're going to yes. get the original Naughty Dog, uh, a lot of the key members of the team all together to talk about that. That's going to happen on Wednesday. We'll be streaming it live on YouTube, and I can't wait for that, because that Thank was a game so that was so close to my heart when I was a little boy at the Second E3 in 1996, I was 16 years old, and I remember walking up to the, uh, the PlayStation kiosk to play Crash, and it inspired me, so to have you on our show is always such an honor, Mark. Thanks so much.